Hi guys. So this talk is going to be about billing stack basically, which is a project done for doing chargeback and billing services on kind of like consuming Solometer in OpenStack. Um, so many guys think that like the, the whole billing kind of thing is kind of like boring. It's not that fun. There is all the auditing, all the all the boring processes. You don't usually want to develop like time and time again. Um, but the kind of sad issue with OpenStack is there is like there isn't any default billing system you can go and use for your chargeback or billing services. So uh, these are the URLs for the project at the moment. Um, they're kind of temporary, so we're going to move some of the stuff over to Stackforge to use the uh, OpenStax um, CI stuff and all that. So we'll be kind of like going into the OpenStack release cycle and trying to release when they do. Um, there is the documentation on read the docs, and there is a, the current home for the different projects. So, kind of today is like going just quickly through what is billing stack, uh, what we've done, and what we're wanting to do. Um, so, we're only two guys at the moment. <laughs> So it's a pretty small two-man army. Um, so there's the emails and what we've done and all that, yada yada. So as I said, there is kind of like different issues with the current billing systems that you can get, like which is open source. Um, they're kind of like old style. Uh, not really meant for the cloud billing space. Um, they're like no good, I mean, there's no good alternatives that you can get for free that you can download and customize and do what you need with. There's only stuff like J billing, you have Recurly, uh, but no, none of them actually comes with any default integration towards like OpenStack or Solometer. Um, there's also the uh, thing where, like, the current, like, what is open source billing systems like JBilling, they only release, like, one, one release or one version, like, every year at most. So if you go check out, like, JBilling, you'll see that they have, like, a version which is from last year sometime, and it doesn't come with any integration APIs, there is no uh, there is no like documentation, really. There is no help to get unless you pay for it, uh, and it's kind of expensive if you want to buy one as well, unless you just want uh, to use Recurly, for example, or Chargeify, which are the two SaaS vendors on the online market, I guess. So uh, we started out doing uh, billing stack which is uh, basically a piece of Python stack software, kind of, like OpenStack for billing. So we have um, like written in uh, using the, uh, I mean, we have the Apache license for the license, so you can like grab the code, do whatever you want with it, and just be using it. There's uh, the interfaces for, doing things is very easy to like plug in new stuff because it's all like based on plugins. So just make a change in a config and you're using something else than what's standard. Uh, it's very decoupled. So you have like um, the different services for doing like uh, payments, invoicing, and everything else in the billing space is like you can just rip it out and use your own. And as I tried to point out earlier, it's kind of like we're hoping to be the default billing system for OpenStack that you can just, if you need to use, just pull it down and use it. 
So we kind of have like the traveling down the payment lane from when you're pulling some data from Solometer, wanting to mediate it towards a billing system, wanting to uh, apply some prices on the data that you've been pulling down from Solometer. You're wanting to take these thing which has been rated and actually turn it into an invoice. And then finally you want to do like um, you want to like charge your customers for this, either if you're using some kind of in-house system to do it, like SAP or something, or you can use uh, online payment gateway or something else, like Braintree or Spreedly. Uh, so this is an overview of what we have, like the different processes within the Bling space until now that we've done, what we want to do. And there's like an overview of each process and which component in billing stack is doing it. This is kind of how it lo looks. So you've got the uh, kind of like OpenStack or someone else sitting on the top, which is kind of like your source for doing things or the source of the data. So you're wanting to pull the data mediate it and push it up to some random billing system, which in our terms is billing stack. Um, wanting to apply the rating, which is the rater service, which is within billing stack or something else. You can use the uh, biller to, to like make invoices. And then there is uh, the collector, which goes out and takes the invoices and collects your money for it or the payments. We have a client or like CLI and language bindings library for interacting with different kinds of billing systems. Like um, it doesn't care if you're using billing stack or if you're using Recurly or Chargeify. It's just a API layer kind of. So, but what's really neat is you just uh, Tell it the provider that you want to use, and it's kind of like the same top level API. So you have the metering service, which is basically collecting all of your data inside of the cloud, like Solometer. Uh, it's querying, I mean, it's collecting the data and aggregating it, storing it. It's like there. So the mediator is basically taking the uh, like Solometer raw data thing and wanting to turn it into something useful, basically, in terms of financial stuff. So this is then showing the uh, one of the uh, proposed kind of like mediation processes where you're pulling the data from a source, which is a solometer or something else. And you're taking it into the uh, mediation process or the script, or whatever you want to use, and you're pushing it into billing stack in this kind of scenario. Uh, so one guy came up with another idea, which is Basically, instead of having a mediation process, which like pulls data and push it into the billing system, you have Solometer maybe pushing the data for you instead when it's like collecting it. So Solometer goes out to some OpenStack-ish service and says, uh, or it gets like the amounts of compute hours that's been used, and it pushes it straight into the billing system. So you can have like almost like live billing kind of or live stats for billing, which is pretty cool. It's like what Amazon just started doing, I think, a few months back. Um, the cool thing about the whole uh, billing, the previous slide, it has the uh, factorial stuff. So basically the Destination, if you're using the client library, you can use whatever billing system is supported there, or you can like write your own plugin. So if you have something 
in-house plumbing system, you can use that. If you have something else you need to pull data from, like some legacy system or something that you wish to use billing stack for, you can use a source plugin to pull the data from. Uh, so this is kind of like the billing stack core service. Um, it has the notion of a multi-tenant thing going on with merchants. So you have like, uh, if you have different companies or organizations with a new company, and you want some of them to be able to build kind of like their own thing, you can just make them a merchant, or you can have like one globally for everybody. Uh, it has products, which is uh, like an instance, for example, or like uh, disk usage, or anything else. It uses a plan to kind of like group together the products in, when using plan items, which is pointing to a product that we're wanting to build. So a plan would be like compute, for example, where you would have like some storage on the instance, some network traffic, the CPU hours that it's spending. We have a thing called subscriptions, which is, uh, if you're familiar with like other kinds of billing systems like this, it's kind of like the link which links the plan, uh, the customer and the rating data. Like, it's kind of like the link to the other system where you're getting the data from. Um, so, we have like uh, the mediator, we have like a billing, the idea is to have like a billing policy, so you can say like, uh, this thing should be billed every hour or something. It's kind of in a draft at the moment, but. Uh, so basically the rating service, or the rater, is taking the incoming data from something which you're pushing into the billing system and applying prices to it and just storing, storing it in a database. It's based on the plans which has the prices, basically. There is uh, the billing service which will basically take the billing rules that you have, which can be like discounts, and other various things like this. Uh, discounts, add-ons, anything else that you want to do before creating the invoice. So it takes, um, it has like the invoice, with a lot of invoice lines. So you have like, uh, for example, a day in a week, which can be like an invoice line. This too has like policies for when you should be creating the invoice, basically, is the idea behind it. It's doing billing, basically, per customer, or the invoicing. It's creating the invoice. It's doing, like, the applying the billing rules to the usage thing. And taxes, and when it's due, and the discounts, everything like this. Then you're wanting to charge for something that a guy has been using. So if your user is like consuming tons of computer hours, you want to bill this, get paid for it. There's a service for that as well. So this is storing the payment gateways, which can be your in-house targeting targeted system to build the stuff from, I mean, to take the payments from. It's creating transactions storing towards the payment gateway. So it does like, uh, I'm going to charge you for like 50 bucks and it tries to do this and it stores it in the database if it's succeeded or not. And that's then, um, the amount is then, is then removed from the invoice like that you have, you have like an invoice which is X amounts of dollars and you're trying to charge the guy for it. There's various payment methods also. So you can have like, a customer can have like a Visa card, a credit card. It can be 
just to place a transaction in some other system if you're using SAP to take charge towards the department in the company. So that's what that's doing, basically. Uh, so we have like a small demo video showing the UI which is basically written in using AngularJS, if you're familiar with that. It's a JavaScript library, which will basically use the REST API of billing stack for administration. We also have, we're planning to do like a horizon integration, so your users can go and see how much they've used of an instance. You can control the payment methods and so on as well. So that's basically creating a merchant. So you're basically like signing up into billing stack. Then he's logging in. And there you see the view that you come into when you're signing in. So he's making a product, which is in this case, some storage stuff. So you can do like a plan which is just filling in some text and linking it to the product and some price. So there you're doing like the linking from the plan and you're making the price stuff and how much you're going to charge for a product. like adding some other stuff. You can do like volume-based pricing and you have fixed pricing and there is the other one as well. So you can define like if somebody is using a range of something from the slometer and it's between the given range, it will apply, apply different prices. So this is basically all using the REST API, which is running in the background somewhere. The user doesn't know it basically, where it is. So you're adding a customer, which is basically a tenant in OpenStack. So you make like a customer and you have the subscription, which is going to be linking the customer inside of billing stack to the tenant ID. There's the credit cards going in. So at the moment, we're not storing the payment card, I mean the credit card information because of different compliances. So we're just pushing it to some payment gateway that you want to use. Yeah. 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 Because if not, you'd need to go like for the whole audit stuff and all that. Yeah. We're kind of working on that. <laughs> so, sorry. Uh, so the question was if you can use billing stack, like if you can have like hosted applications use billing stack to bill their stuff. Was it right? Yep. Yeah, you can. So you can just let it sign up for as a new merchant as its own merchant, and you can use, then it's totally isolated from the other stuff, you know? So, 
we're also wanting to have like, uh, we haven't done it yet, but we're wanting to have like the notion of like a reseller for a merchant. So you can have other guys reselling your stuff. So, oh, the lights went off. Pretty funny. So, um, that's basically what I have. So I want to say thanks to the guys that's been helping this far. We have some very cool guys from other companies wanting to help and which has been helping until now. So, so any questions? Yeah. So you have the, yeah, yeah, so the question is how do we map the whole product thing to something in Solometer? So you have like the product name, that's going to be the same as like CPRs inside of, I mean inside of Solometer. So it knows how to take the, uh, so when, when you're setting, sending the data from Solometer over, you basically have the name of the thing that you're going to build, which is the name of the product. Yeah, so we had some guys from Telgen yesterday who was wanting to help out and some other guys. So a lot of this is kind of like in the draft phase still. Yeah. So we have, I didn't mention this, but we have a thing called the payment gateway plugins which is basically a plugin API that you can like, you write your own class for something, and then you basically, you define the methods that you need, which is the same as the base class. And then Billingstack just knows how to do like, create transaction, create account, create credit card. Yeah, it's like, yeah. You can even use stuff like Speedly. So if you like, if we like make a Speedly interface, like a plugin, then you have like support for, I don't know, like hundreds of different payment gateways, I think. <laughs> so. Yeah, so basically when you're, uh, so when a merchant likes makes a new payment gateway, it has its own configuration so it's totally isolated from the other merchants. And when you do like add a customer, it's going out to the payment gateway and making a new customer or new account. So, but we're not adding the, uh, we're not adding the customer before you have added like a payment method because it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. What was the question again? Um, so you're wondering if you can do like, uh, just show the cost and not actually bill it. Yeah. You can use, uh, you can do like create the invoice or you can replace any of the components with whatever you want basically. Um, so it's just a stack of different pieces that you can like mix and fix together. Yeah, we, we have like many different use cases, like hosting guys inside of companies, which just wants, like we, I had a use case at my previous employer, which just wanted to have like, you have used this much, we need to charge you for this. And that's what, basically what they needed. So you don't need to use the whole stack. I'm just gonna, you had a question? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I 
at the moment it is, but you can like, you can do a simple script, for example, which is just queries something in Keystone, and just makes a customer inside of the given merchant, and then makes a subscription, and you're done. Or you can, we're wanting to do like a thing within Horizon, so basically when like, or anywhere else, when somebody says, like signs up, you already have all of this in the billing system and it's just there. So. How do you mean? Like if you can administrator, I mean administer the whole thing by Horizon or? Um, it's a bit twitchy, you know, because some people want to use, don't want to use billing stack, they want to use something else. So we have the uh, whole factorial stuff. And basically what it allows you to do, you can make like one generic plugin for Horizon, and you can use this client to just communicate with either the billing stack or the curly. So the features are going to be different. So we want to narrow the scope for Horizon to what's needed, like the how much you've used, uh, how much credits you have left, and that kind of stuff. So there was a question from there, yeah? I'll do the guy in the back next. What was your question? Yep. So you're basically wondering if like, that the tenant shouldn't be able to create instances before they've paid. Yeah, we're, we have the stuff on the roadmap, <laughs> kind of. So uh, yeah, but it's definitely a thing that some companies don't want to, guys wondering about and just like making 20 instances before they've paid. Or if you want to have like a workflow maybe, if, like if a guy signs up, the boss needs to go and approve like X amounts of credit per month. That might be a use case. You had a question? We, we haven't come that far, but we have, uh, so we have like another use case as well, which is uh, your tenant has like a credit card, but the payments isn't going through. So what do you do then with all the stuff that is running, if it's a service provider? Or if it's within a company, you have the same thing, like you might have like, say you wanna give each user like X amounts of credit credits per month, like US dollars, what happens when you've actually run out of credit. You just shut down and delete his account or something, or do you, uh, like, given an email and say, oh, you need to do something with this. If not, we'll shut down your instances within three days or something. We have, like, uh, Rackspace does this, and I think every other major vendor as well. They're doing, like, if you use up your, if you don't pay or you use up your credits, they'll send you an email telling you to go in and fix your credit card and if you don't, you have like, I think it's seven or something days, and they'll just shut down your stuff and deactivate your account, basically. Yeah. There's like different use cases. Some people want to just shut down everything and disable the account. Somebody else wants to do something else. So it's, we need to come up with a way that I think does the different things like some kind of policy maybe, like uh, payment policy, like if you don't pay, what do we do? Yeah, yeah, that's... No, we don't have a thing for that yet. But it'll definitely be a case. Yes, yes, yes. Every time again, we should monitor. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we have an API, so you can use like, uh, I mean, you can either possibly make the payment service go ahead and check towards the payment gateway. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can do like, so if it supports like, um, if the payment gateway so it does like push notifications, you can configure that and have it push into the API. Or you can have the, I mean, the payment service go ahead and like, what's going on? 